Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at the second part for this lesson. Um, in this lesson, the whole focus is on measures of center, and specifically in this video, we're going to be looking at weighted averages. If you haven't already done so, make sure you watch that first video so you know how to find the average or the mean and how to use summation notation. But in this video, like I said, we're going to be looking specifically just at how to find a weighted average. So let's go ahead and start by looking at this example. So here it says, in some schools, a student's GPA is calculated based on the weights or credits assigned to a letter grade in a specific class. In Susan's high school, AP courses are weighted as five credits, honors as four credits, regular courses as three credits, and electives as one credit. The grading scale below is used in her school. So we're going to use Susan's report card at the right to find her GPA. So uh, what we have here, again, is that each of these um, classes are given a different weight or different credit based on their level of difficulty. So an easier class like keyboarding that may not meet every day um, and not, obviously is not going to be as diff difficult as AP Calculus is, not, is it going to be given a basic weight of just one or credit of one where the AP Calculus, a more difficult, more rigorous course, probably meets every single day, is given a credit of five, or a weight of five. And so the way that we calculated a, or calculate a weighted mean is we're going to take those credits and multiply them by the grade point that she's earned, that's reflected by her letter grade. So she got an A plus in, keyboard, in keyboarding, so she earned four grade points. So the weight of that is we would take one times four. And we're going to do that for each of these um, courses. So we would take 1 times 4 plus the next uh, class is AP Calculus, which has a weight of 5. And for that one, her grade point that she earned was 2.67. And then the next class was the Honors English, which was given a weight of 4. And the grade point that she earned was 3.33. And the next one is regular level art history, which has a weight of 3. She got a D minus in there, which is a GPA of 0.67. And lastly, in regular level statistics, that's given a weight of 3. And she earned a grade point of 2 for that. Now that's not the only thing that we have to do to find the grade point average. Because remember to find the average or mean, we divide by the total number of items in the set. When we're trying to find a weighted average, what we do is we divide by the total weight. And an easy way to remember that is if you think about a weight, it's going to be heavier, so it's going to, be, it's going to sink to the bottom. So that's what's going to go in the denominator. It's going to be the sum of our weights. which would be this. And so on your calculator, if we uh, figure out the numerator, your numerator is going to be 38.68. And if we add up all the weights there, it's going to add up to be a total of 16. And if we divide those, we get approximately 2.42. So that was, or that would be her weighted average. And if we wanted to figure out a grade for that, a 2.42 would be a C+. Let's look at the next example. This is going to be a little bit different because here they've already figured out um, percents for the grade. So in a college economics course, suppose that homework counts for 25% of the grade, quizzes count towards 10% of the grade, tests 45%, and attendance 20% of each student's overall grade. Frances and her friend Adam earned the following scores during the semester. We want to figure out who received the higher overall grade. So let's look at their grades here for a minute so we can see that Francis did a really good job. They were, uh, he uh, went to class every single day, had 100% attendance, got about a B average for his tests and quizzes, and a little, uh, about an A minus, uh, B plus, uh, for homework. Adam, on the other hand, did an excellent job on all of his homework, quizzes, and tests, averaging in the A's, 
but uh, maybe it all came natural to him, so he didn't feel like it was necessary to come to class every day, and his attendance was only 70%. So using these weights, we're going to figure out who got the overall higher grade for this course. So we're going to so we're going to go in and we're going to start with let's start with Francis. Uh, so Francis, again, 25% of the grade is going to be based on homework. So we're going to take and change that percent to a decimal. So 0 0.25 times 89 plus 10% of the grade is based on quizzes, and he got uh, 82 per on quizzes. Oops. Uh, plus 45 percent of their grade is tests, and on his tests he got 87 points, and 20 percent of the grade is attendance, and he got 100 points there for his attendance. Now the weight in this case would be again the sum of or, I'm sorry, the denominator would be the sum of the weights. Well, in this case, the weights are the percentages. And if you add those up, 25%, 10%, 45%, and 20%, it's add up to be 100%. And 100% as a decimal is 1. So I could sit and divide this by 1, but we know that that's not going to change the value any. I just want you to know that's where the weight went. So if I add those, so if I calculate that, we get a total of 89.6. Now let's look at Adam. So again, 25% is based on the homework. And he got a score of 95 for his homework. 10% of his grade is based on his quizzes, and he got a score of 90 on his quiz. And 45% is based on tests. He got a 92 on his test, and 20% of his grade is based on attendance, and he scored 70 in his attendance. Again, we could divide by 1, but again, that doesn't change the value any, so I'm not going to do that right here. But if we calculate this total, we get 88.2. So here we can see that even though attendance is only 20% of his overall score, the fact that he scored a 70 on his attendance means that he's going to get less of a grade than Francis, who had 100 points in attendance and who scored lower on his homework quizzes and tests than Adam did. So we can see the significance of that there. So that is a weighted average. In the next video, we're going to be looking at how to find a frequency table and how to graph a frequency table. So with that, good luck now as you work on some of those problems dealing with weighted averages.